Indonesia. World's fourth most populous nation, with over 270 million inhabitants. Which 70% of the population, mainly concentrated on the island of Java? Particularly in Jakarta, the country's capital and biggest city. Unsurprisingly, road congestion particularly in and around its major cities. Challenging at inter-cities connectivity, where major roads and expressway, were not able to accommodate the growing numbers of commuters, using the traditional inland vehicles. With this in mind, Indonesia's government built an efficient public transport system. From Jakarta, going to the major cities in West Java. This is, Jakarta, Bandung High Speed Railway. Indonesia's multi-billion high-speed rail project, is a 142.3 km railroad network. Spanning from the capital city of Jakarta, that will connect to the city of Bandung in West Java. The standard gauge track has a maximum speed of 350 km per hour. Connecting the country's two largest cities, from more than three hours in just 40 minutes. The entire high-speed rail network, will feature four halting stations, from Halim in Jakarta, via Karawang, and Walini. The last station will be Tigalur in Bandung, where the depot is also built. The 73.2 km of the track will be at ground level. 53.5 km will be elevated, and 15.6 km will be underground, which includes 13 tunnels. Update to the first high-speed rail project in ASEAN. On September 21, 2021, the last batch of 6,600 tons of rails, for Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway project arrives at the Silicap port in central Java. While the tunnel number 8 of the high speed railway network is already completed last August. May this year, Indonesian President Joko Widodo, visits the construction site of Tunnel No. 1, and inspect the construction progress of Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway in Bekasi. progresses are of great significance to the full completion of the high-speed rail project. Jakarta Bandung high-speed train will use local wisdom designs, in the form of Komodo, and Batik. The exterior design of EMUs for this modern mass transportation project, will have red and silver colors, with an outer shape that uses a triangular pattern motif, and represents the scales of Komodo. Then, the red color which also takes inspiration from the red and white of Indonesian national flag, on the side walls and the front, that moves when the train is running. It will remind the flag, that flutters and foster as a sense of pride. Another local content that was raised was the Mega Mandung Batik, which can be seen on the panels on the passenger seats in each class. This batik, is a typical motif of the West Java area which is the main route for the Jakarta Bandung high-speed train. The project hounded without controversies. Aside that the high-speed rail project is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative Infrastructure Scheme, it is also facing a cost overrun of nearly $2 billion. And a number of other challenges, including its right-of-way acquisition and ineffective communications between the Indonesian and Chinese contractors. In addition, the sustainability of the project is also put into question, considering for its cheap cost quoted by Japan International Cooperation Agency. As its contract price is economically unfeasible for a high-speed rail project. China's technology were also considered inferior, per public views as compared to a Japanese technology. Indonesia originally expected construction to cost $5.5 billion, but had increased its projection to $6 billion as of January, five years since the project broke ground. Now, the project estimated cost reached to $7.9 billion. 
Before China secured the project, Japan had proposed building a Shinkansen-style rail link from Jakarta to Banda. It estimated cost as 600 billion yen, or 6.2 billion dollars. With 450 billion yen, funded via 40-year official development assistance loan. Japan offered a rate of 0.1% on the loans, lower than the typical rate of at least 1%, in exchange for a Japanese company winning the contract. But Widodo chose the Chinese option, which promised the transfer of high-speed rail technology and kept Indonesia off the hook for any costs or debt repayment. China's plan to finish construction in 2018, compared with Japan's potentially lengthy screening process before even breaking ground, also contributed to the decision. However, due to multiple delays, the project is expected to be operational by 2022. The project was funded by 75% through loans from the China Development Bank, and the rest from KCIC coffers. KCIC, in turn, is 60% owned by the Indonesian side, and 40% by the Chinese side. The financing scheme is clear. China offered 40 years loan from China Development Bank, 10 years of grace period, with 30 years of amortization, and 2% fixed interest rate. Currently the project stands below 80% for the overall completion. While the construction of the stations also achieved below 50% completion rate. It is expected to accept its first passengers by 2022 after a multiple of delays been encountered. Southeast Asia has emerged as a battleground for development of Japan, vie with China for greater influence in the region. But Chinese assistance is accused of fueling greater corruption in developing countries. While Japan stresses its sustainability, high quality and transparent development aid, the country has struggled to cinch infrastructure contracts in Southeast Asia. Indonesia's quagmire could provide hints on how Tokyo can better woo the region. This is Jakarta, Bandung High Speed Railway.